Hi, I'm professional sports handicapper Ross Benjamin. It's time for another edition of my NFL regular season win totals. Today, it's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. And right now, as we speak, a consensus of Las Vegas and offshore sports books shows the Jaguars over and under win total at four and a half to go over that number at minus 120 and to go under that number at money line odds of minus 110. The Jaguars went six and 10 a season ago, finishing dead last in the AFC South, uh, although there was a lot of positives to take away from that season. However, uh, I just don't know how Doug Marone keeps his job. After starting out his tenure with Jacksonville in 2017, in a season in which, them, um, in which Jacksonville, excuse me, won the AFC South uh, division title and advanced to the AFC championship game where they fell to New England 24-20, to and that was the eventual champion, New England Patriots. Since that time, they've gone 11-21. and so, um, again, and not only that, it's not the fact he won 11 and 21. He's shown a history, meaning Marone, of having dust-ups with players, not being able to get along with general managers, not only in his time in Jacksonville, but in Buffalo as well. So, uh, again, we'll see. I can't believe he's not on the hot seat this year, and I can't believe if they get off to a terrible start, they wouldn't contemplate making a move at midseason or somewhere therein. Um, when we look at the Jaguars last year, one of the positives that we could take away from their season was a surprise showing of sixth-round draft pick Gardner Minshew. Uh, Minshew uh, was an afterthought in last year's draft, and after the Jacksonville Jaguars signed Nick Foles for a long-term multi-million dollar contract, it was uh, pretty much a given. It was Foles' job to lose. However, Foles went down early with a shoulder injury, and Minshew was thrown right into the fire. And boy, oh boy, he took the bull by the horns and ran with it. As um, Jacksonville went 0 and 4 without Minshew, and a respectable 6 and 6 with him as their starting quarterback. Along those 12 starts, he threw for 2,700 yards, 21 touchdowns against just six interceptions, as well as running for 344 yards as well. The running back position is in solid hands with Leonard Fournette. Uh, despite their dismal record last year, Fournette in 15 games still rushed for over 1,100 yards. He also caught 76 balls out of the backfield for better than 500 yards as well. The question remains now, um, Fournette is, I believe, in the fourth year of his rookie contract, and they're going to have to make a decision on whether they want to opt for the fifth year and, or if they want to trade him while he still has a lot of value. So it would not shock me whatsoever if Fournette gets moved before the season starts or at the trade deadline uh, near the midpoint of the season. Unless Jacksonville gets off to a surprising start and looks like they can contend in the AFC South, which is a pretty much a long shot if you look at their odds of uh, plus 3,000 to win the AFC South. The wide receiver crew ain't bad at all, folks. DJ Shark caught 87 balls for over 1,000 yards last year. They also have a couple of decent wide receivers that uh, joined Shark, Shark, uh, I'm sorry, in D.D. Westbrook and Chris Connolly. Uh, Westbrook, 66 catches in each of the last two seasons. And Connolly, 47 receptions last year for five touchdowns. And he also averaged over 16 yards per catch. They did pick up veteran tight end Tyler Eifert, formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals, in the offseason. Eifert uh, did play all 16 games for Cincinnati last season, and it was the first time in his seven-year NFL career that he played an entire season, and he's missed an awful lot of games, folks. I have it written down right here, if you bear with me a second. Uh, he's missed 53 of a possible 96 regular season games in his career. So not exactly durable. Uh, on a positive note, he did come off a season in which he played in all 16 regular season games. Having said that, their defense is another story. Um, 24th in total defense, also 28th in scoring. They were, were very good, excuse me, in getting to the quarterback last year as they had 47 sacks. 
that was eighth best in the NFL. A lot has to do with their uh, defensive ends. Josh Allen, who was a rookie last year out of Kentucky, he promises to be a good one. And then Yannick Nguike, uh, N- I hope I, I'm butchering his name, Nguike. Uh, hopefully he forgives me for butchering his name. Anyway, those are two pretty damn good defensive ends and had a lot to do with uh, the pressure that Jacksonville was able to get on quarterbacks a season ago. Um, Their secondary is going to be very young. Look, this is a Jacksonville team that drafted, had 12 draft picks in the 2020 draft. And five of those draft picks are on their two deep depth chart on defense. Two of them are scheduled to start. So this is going to be an extremely young defense. I think they're going to be very vulnerable. I think they're a defense of the future. Miles Jack, still a very good linebacker. A couple great defensive ends. And uh, like I alluded to, some young players being thrown into the mix. Uh, Jacksonville has the makings of a very good defense uh, in the future. But right now, I think um, they're not going to get there. I think this is a defense you might see in the bottom uh, third of the league, possibly uh, bottom five of the league in terms of scoring and total yards allowed. I think it's going to be a long year for the Jaguars. I really do. Um, Their schedule is tough. Uh, They're in transition right now with all these youngsters being infiltrated into the lineup. And Gardner Minshew is going to have to prove to me that he could do it two years in a row. Um, Again, there was a former quarterback, or not former, a quarterback that's playing right now that was drafted in the sixth round and is a future Hall of Famer. Um, let's not go there, though. <laughs> anyway, you knew where I was going with this. But anyway, um, Minshew is going to have to prove to me he's going to be uh, a reliable quarterback for the long term. Uh, Jacksonville did invest heavily into him by getting rid of Nick Foles. So not invest monetarily, but put a lot of faith in uh, Minshew that he's their quarterback of the future. We'll see. I'm going under the total of four and a half regular season wins on Jacksonville and money line odds of minus 110. Until the next time, God bless and good luck.